Yo, yo, happy Sunday, happy Sunday, happy late Sunday, early Sunday, mid Sunday, happy week Monday. Um, whenever you guys get to see it, we're going to talk about the quarterback carousel. Let's get into it. Hit the weed, I told myself the last time will be my last I don't trust my own niggas, now my mind racing fast Got my foot up on the gas, got a hundred on the dash If the police run up on me, I ain't stopping for their ass Boy, you know my L's dirty, if they stop me, I'm going to jail Surely I'll be next to my brother in the cell No bail for me, man, let me out Send me back the bitches that smell pretty All I gotta do is call once and she there already Yeah, hey, buddy, can't you tell I'm going through hell I don't even open my mail I'm in a shower with a soap and a towel I need cleansing if you don't know my name, my name is Keith. So I do black quarterback series. Also did the playoffs throughout the playoffs. If you kind of want to relive the season, I have a whole playlist of black quarterback series from week from preseason, the schedule release all the way up until the Super Bowl. So if you want to check that out and binge watch all that, if you want to get some football nostalgia, go ahead and check that playlist out. But today we're going to talk about. Um, Cam Newton, Sean Watson, Luke Carson Wentz, and um, Dwayne Haskins. So let's get into it. So the Dwayne Haskins and Cam Newton, I recorded that previously. That was the video I was going to put out this week, but I wasn't really comfortable with the the way um, my mind was at the time. But I do like the content that I got out of it. So I'm going to show some of that. I'm going to show the Cam Newton part, and then I'm going to come back. So before we get started, I'm going to show you guys two numbers. So I'm going to show you two sets of numbers, right? So look at this set of numbers, right? This set of numbers looks much better, right? This looks like a decent season. Not crazy, but it's a decent season, right? And so um, then we're going to look at these numbers of the season. This season doesn't look as good, but it's whatever it's whatever um if you knew the circumstances you would be like okay well what do you expect so look at that season and so i'm gonna put them both on the screen at the same time um one is cam newton when you put out his rushing when you put his rushing touchdowns in his when you combine the rushing totals touchdowns with his passing touchdowns and then one it's just his passing touchdowns so now you'd be like, oh, he sees a quarterback. Why would you put the rushing in there? I put the rushing in there because that's a part of his game. New England looked really good up until he got COVID and then the bottom fell out of the, the bottom fell out of the season. When you look at the numbers and you don't just go off your perception of Cam Newton and what you think of Cam, you look at it and you be like, oh, okay, well, um, he had m not much to work with. And you might say, oh, Keith, but he was bad. His QBR declined every week, and he just looked like he was trying to, he couldn't throw 10 yards. I agree. I agree with all that. But is Cam healthy? We don't know. For the sake of argument, we had Cam was healthy. I can't defend him not being able to throw the ball. But what I can defend and the fact that he had a decent season and the season wasn't as bad as people make it out to be. The season was not as bad as people made it out to be and I'll tell you why. Because he was working with COVID and like 10 opt-outs on his defense. And people are like, oh, Tom Brady led this team to 11 wins. This is not the same team that Tom Brady led to 11 wins. Tom Brady had like a top 10 defense last year and most of those guys did not play this year. And I think Stephon Gilmore was out for COVID and hurt as well. So, when you tell when people tell me all oh, this is the same defense that um the same defense and the same team that Tom had eleven wins with, that's not true because this is not the same team. And there's no weapons on this team, let's just call it for what it is. Tom Brady is a better quarterback than Cam. So Cam didn't need all this extra stuff. And is Tom Brady a better quarterback? Yes. 
Is this, is it all Cam's fault that this season was awful? No, but it's part. It's most of his fault. I would give it about 50-50. Bill for not putting the right things around him, and Josh McDaniels. Bill and Josh McDaniels combined, you can share that fifty for not for not putting the right talent around him and forcing Cam to do stuff that he doesn't do. Cam has never been a short yardage type of guy. That they wanted to make him Tom, and that's not the way he what he is. He likes to get it downfield, crazy runs. He wants to look really good, right? And just just the mesh didn't get there, right? And so with Cam, he didn't there there's a couple games there that he did not play well. He got benched a couple times. I'm, I'm and I want to start by saying I'm not defending Cam at all. But the perception that all this was on Cam is BS because it wasn't. So I think if Cam doesn't have COVID, they they win probably eight or nine games. They probably go nine and seven. They still don't make the playoffs, but they look a lot better than they did towards the end. Um, the fact Bill got like what five, six wins out of this team is a miracle. And um, and so Cam's overall numbers, because I only show certain numbers. He was 242 for 368, 66 completion percentage, and 40 and 47 QBR. Not good at all. That's is that starting quarterback QBR? No. Is it starting quarterback in New England with nobody else on the market? Yes. And I don't know if he's gonna be back. I expect him to be back in New England. Like honestly, I mean, it's like when you're it's like when you're in a bad marriage with kids. Neither one of y'all really have much to gain by leaving. Cam doesn't have much to gain by leaving New England. And I don't think New England has much to gain unless they trade for one of these guys. Like a Jordan Love or the, unless they trade for somebody. You're not gonna you're not gonna keep Jared Stidham, are you? Because Jared Stidham had his chance. He was in the offense for years and still lost the job to Cam. So I don't, I don't even know what to think of that. So, if I had to get Cam overall grade for the season, it would be a low D. Because he didn't play well. COVID or not, he didn't play well. And that's that's what it was. And one more throwaway. Um, he had 137 attempts for 592 yards and 12 rushing touchdowns. Um, that's Cam's season. So, we'll see how Cam gets what he what he what happens to Cam. Because we have no idea what happens to Cam. I would love to t- I would love to sit and talk to Cam and see if that shoulder is actually right. I wish somebody would ask him that. If they did in a press conference recently, I put it up. Look at all that. Uh, Cam Newton had a better season than people give him credit for. But it's Cam Newton, so, you know, people act like it don't exist. So um, let's, let's move on to Carson Wentz. So Carson, and the reason Carson Wentz affects us is because Jalen Hurts. And so Carson Wentz got traded to Indianapolis for a third round pick, and I think a compensatory pick or something like that. I'll put, I'll put the Adam Schefter report on the screen. So Carson Wentz didn't, didn't want to fight for a job. So he went to Indianapolis where he's the unquestioned star. And which is, that's fine and all, right? But my question being can he take adversity? Because we've seen him hit with adversity and not be able to handle it. So can you can say if he gets off to an awful start again in Indianapolis, does he go into the tank again? Because he didn't want to fight for fight for the pick or fight fight for the position. Because even at the beginning of his reign in Philly, players there was rumors coming out that players didn't really like his um, dis-ease and just the way he was. They they didn't really vibe with him like that. And that's because he acted so uppity. We can get into a reason why that later. First round pick, you know, I'm not I'm not here to really get into that. Um, why I think he's uppity. But he came in thinking he was all that in a bag of chips. And then when he hit adversity, he wanted to leave. And Jalen Hurts is the almost opposite of that. He's been through adversity from college on up to now. So my question being for Carson is when stuff gets hard, are you going to leave it? Are you going to leave again? Are you going to give up again? So, I'm 50-50 on it. Um, 50% is this is the coach. He won't have to do as much. He has way more talent. And 
Philly then he has more talent in Indianapolis than he than he had in Philly his last two years. But on the other side, what if it's his fault that they're not good this year? They were ten and six without him. What if they go nine and seven or eight and eight or seven and nine and they miss the playoffs with him? Can he handle that? So that remains to be seen. And so with Jalen Hurts, this is a great opportunity for him to be a starter. Um, I love Jalen Hurts. I just don't know if they have the talent around him to make him look better than he actually is. Um, Jalen Hurts is a poor man's Dak Prescott. But Jalen Hurts also possesses the leadership of Dak Prescott. So it's like, can you put your on-field product, can your on-field product match your leadership quality ability? We've got to have the same questions with Dak. Can Dak's leadership ability, can his play match his leadership ability? So that remains to be seen. I think Jalen Hurst is going to do very well next year. Um, I think he's going to have um, more rushing touchdowns and interceptions. Um, I think he's going to be well. I think he's going to do well. They're going to change their whole offense. I don't know who is going to. I can't remember who's the head coach if they even have a head coach. Um, if they have a head coach, it'd be here right here. I'm not sure who the head coach is because they just cleared house in Philly. So. They need to give him some more talent. They just released Deshaun Jackson. Um, I think his, I think Deshaun Jackson's career is over. And um, we're going to get Dwayne Haskins. My Dwayne Haskins topic, I'm sure that now. It's a Dwayne Haskins. Let's, let's get both of these guys out the way. So, because I always talk about Dwayne Haskins and Cam Newton kind of is like mirror image of in mirror images of each other. They're kind of the same guy, just one went that way and one went the other way. So I kind of kind of feel that they're, they're kind of the same. So Dwayne Haskins season was less than Stellar. Uh his QBR was 31. 31. Right. Ridiculous. Uh he was 148 uh completions and 241 attempts, five TDs and seven touchdowns. Or five TDs and seven interceptions. He's in Pittsburgh now. Um, I have a couple of Pittsburgh friends. My mom's fiance is a Pittsburgh guy. And nobody is sold on Dwayne Haskins except for me. I think he'll be very serviceable, especially you're with Mike Tomlin now. You're behind Big Ben. Say what you want about Big Ben and how they swept all his rape allegations under the rug and all that. Um, just watching Big Ben prepare will help. It's uh, like my grandfather. I didn't work. I didn't work manual labor like him, but I saw him work hard and come home every day tired. Wow, oh, man, I, that's that's how hard I need to work. So if you see these big men work hard, now I don't know. If, I don't think Big Ben is that hard of a work. I think he's just gifted. But just to see what a professional is, uh, even though I don't think Big Ben is, I'm kind of contradicting myself, but. I think it would serve him best to be in that Pittsburgh culture. And uh, Flim Lowe did an excellent video about Dwayne Haskins. Um, I'm probably going to put it up here and I'm put, or I put it at the card at the end. He did an excellent video about Flim. If Flim, Flim, if you ever see this video, bro, I look up to you. I started analyzing st football because I saw you do it. Um, but yeah, uh, I just I really hope Dwayne Haskins gets it together because he's talent. He's a talent. You've seen the talent in flashes. So hopefully he gets it together. So honorable honorable mention. Honorable mention. Um, so McNair, I'm gonna put the link to the article that I read. Uh, one of the McNair said that the information we're getting is misinformed or misguided. misinformed or misguided that's total bs because we all know what y'all are on with Deshaun. we know what's going on with y'all with Deshaun. i'm not gonna say it in this video but we all know there's something going on with Deshaun to where y'all just will die before y'all trade him and i don't know what i dear houston i might make a separate video called dear houston i don't know what y'all are proving holding Deshaun hostage when y'all have released and fired all of his friends. I don't know what y'all expect to, you know, what you expect to get out of that. Um, I, I, I don't know. Um, Deshaun is chilling. Um, he's with his girlfriend for uh, Valentine's Day and everything. Not really worried about it. 
He's wiped his Instagram clean of everything Houston except for maybe one or two posts. And he's done. I, I fully expect that if Deshaun does not get traded by the first preseason game, or I won't say first preseason game, the, the last preseason game, if he's still on the Houston roster of the last preseason game, I think he'll retire. And I would rather him retire than play for that organization. And I'm going to leave it at that because I probably have a whole separate video for, for Deshaun himself. So, so I think Dwayne Haskins will be fine. As you can see in the video, I think he'll be fine. And um, as, long, as long as he has a chance to grow, I think he'll be good. And so... We're gonna get to also I have in that in that same little video, um, which is I, I just didn't have the effort to want to edit it. Um, we talked about we talked about Deshaun and how Steve McNair or not Steve McNair or um, the McNair family is acting like they don't they acting like Deshaun they don't know Deshaun is ready to go. Um, I believe the if I can find the article again I put the article in the description. But it's, they are acting real crazy towards Deshaun, like how dare you ask to leave. And so Deshaun is ready to leave and I think Deshaun is willing to retire over this. And I really hope he retires over this if it comes to that. I, hope, I don't think it'll come to that, but they're asking for three first round picks and I think two starters, which is very reasonable for Deshaun Watson. And um, it's rumors, it's rumors that the Panthers are willing, to, are willing to give up all of that to get Deshaun Watson. I would love to see him with all those young receivers in that decent line in Carolina. Um, Carolina has more talent now than they ever did with Cam, with Cam there. So I would love to see them get a second chance with a brother and for Deshaun to act, for Deshaun to play in the NFC instead of the AFC because the AFC is so crowded with great, with great quarterbacks. Um, I would love to see him play in the NFC. With with uh, he'd be in the same division as Brady, um, so that also helps my Brady hate cause because Brady would have to go on the road. So, but he did that this year anyway. But no, maybe we live there. Um, so yeah, that's that's all I got for y'all. That I can think of right now. Um, good week in football. Um, I, I wanted to wait till Sunday to make sure all the news was out. I didn't want to make a video. And then the news, and then something comes out with Deshaun, and then I'm behind. So um, that's all I got for y'all. Um, y'all have a good week, and I will see y'all later this week.